Hello everyone, and welcome back. Today, we're going to talk about something different. I have to first apologize again for not getting to the India nubs video. We've actually found six more temples that have nubs, so that search is ongoing. Might end up being a four-part series, or longer. For now, we're just going to put that on the back burner. Um, I'm going to talk about some geoglyphs today. That's something I don't normally talk about on my channel, and I haven't really looked into that much, to be honest. But thanks to one of my favorite researchers, Vlad9VT, I have gone on a bit of a wild goose chase the past couple days looking for all these geoglyphs out in the middle of the Sahara Desert. So I thought I would share my findings with you guys and share them with Vlad. I'm going to start with a foreword that has a little bit of my findings and my thoughts, and then I'm going to show the translated version for Vlad so he can pause it and read my thoughts. Hopefully they translate okay. And if you guys find any more that I haven't pinned, I would love to hear your findings, and I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments about who might have made these, when they might have been made, and what do they mean? What what are they symbolic of? I think there's some kind of symbolic design, and they have some variations. And we'll look a little closer as we go on, and we'll try to point out all the different types of glyphs. There are different groupings. I've grouped some just as oddities because I really don't know what else to classify them as yet. They look kind of like boomerangs, a lot of them do, but even those can get pretty wacky and pretty large. Some of these glyphs are pretty big. Uh, one, I believe, was over 400 feet long, and I think some that Vlad found were about 200 feet long, and I think I found his as well. I tried to find all of Vlad's, but Vlad said he found maybe 20 or 30. Well, I have found almost 500 now, and the... Well, we'll just get to the foreword, and we can talk about it after that. Here we go. Vlad, first, let me thank you for showing me these glyphs. I remember your first video from years ago. You had only found one or two glyphs. I looked on Google Earth and found them, too. It was amazing to see them so far into the desert. I did not continue looking for the glyphs, but I never forgot about them. Your recent videos inspired me to look again and you will not believe how many I have found. Almost 500, and I am sure there are more than 500 major glyphs. Perhaps thousands if we include minor mounds, but it gets difficult to determine what is man-made and what is natural. I think you are correct. They do look like directional markers or trail signs. Each glyph is unique and the designs can get very complex. There are clusters in certain areas, and around certain outcrops or hills. The glyphs with avenues all seem to point roughly east, some point northeast and some southeast. The area they cover is vast, much farther than I first thought. The trail kept going and going. I have gone as far to the east and west as I can. The satellite images are not as good in those areas. I think many areas with poor quality images could have glyphs. We just have to wait for the satellites to update the images in those areas. The trail is 689.99 kilometers, 434.33 miles, end to end, from east to west. I measured from the center of the easternmost glyph to the center of the westernmost glyph. The two glyphs measured are the same design, only with slight variation. The glyphs are not in a straight line, however, so the actual route is much longer. From north to south, the trail is 348.95 kilometers, 216.83 miles, again in a straight line. The northernmost glyph is a strange boomerang shape that appears in a few other places. The southernmost is a grouping of circles. There could be many more. I hope you like what I have found. 
I would like your opinion on the boomerang-shaped glyphs or objects. Also, your thoughts about why certain mountains and hills appear to be important. Why are the glyphs where they are? Why do they all face east? Abu Rawash and Zoyet el Aryan in Egypt point north. Maybe these structures were built for similar purposes? I will keep looking and let you know what I find. Thank you as always, Andrew. And here is Vlad and his channel. Link here. I will also put it down in the description. We have three videos from Vlad. Strange unknown symbols I found in Tassili in Azure. And this is the region. Actually, it's a little more to the west of the Tassili in Azure region. But it's that part of the Sahara Desert. He has a second video. It's kind of a addendum. It's just more of the glyphs more of his finds, more of his thoughts, and then he has a general video on the Tassili in Azure region. It's very interesting, some of these rock formations, and he has some very interesting proposals in all of his videos, so links for all these videos will be down in the description. I would also like to encourage everyone to look up images of the Tassili in Azure rock art. There's some very interesting motifs going on here, some depictions, some early writing, we'll say, proto-writing. Very interesting. Uh, I found a few different variations of writing. Uh, some top to bottom and some left to right. It's very interesting that there's a switch and the different scenes that these people depicted in the rocks. Uh, one thing I would like to point out is that I do not see many instances, no parallels, of the glyphs in their rock art. I don't see those designs, I don't see those patterns displayed or depicted in their artwork. If anyone can find any clear examples, that could probably help us find out what they are and maybe decode their messages if they have any. So, highly recommend everyone look into this rock art. And then just as a quick aside before we begin, I would like to point out this site out in California, just as something that seemed a little bit similar to me, the Blythe and Taglios. Shout out CFApps7865 channel for showing me this. I think these look you know, somewhat similar. They're probably not going to be exactly the same. And Vlad shows some from, I believe, Syria and Japan. Those don't look exactly the same as what's out in the Sahara Desert. But just to get you an idea of what some of these glyphs could look like, these are people and animal depictions. We'll zoom in on one here. A man and maybe a camel, they said, or a dog, or who knows what. But some interesting glyphs out in California. They're doing the same kinds of things. They're doing the same kinds of things in Peru, of course, the Nazca region. We all know about that. Okay, so let's get into the glyphs. Now, like I said, there's almost 500 of these things, so I'm not going to show every single one of them, of course. We'll be here for days, like I was searching for these, and I'll probably find more in the process if we did that, but let's just focus on some of the groupings, and we're going to look at the overall pattern and the route that they seem to be taking, the direction changes, and the clusters, and the important objects, the important outcrops and hills, and then we're going to focus on some of these more strange variations, these boomerang-shaped things that I haven't shown yet, and I don't think Vlad has noticed yet, but they're clustered in certain specific areas around the heart of this rift valley that we're going to zoom in on in a minute. So I think we're going to start on the easternmost side, and we're just going to work our way west, and maybe we'll stop and go up and down around this large rift valley that seems to be a destination or a place of importance. It kind of seems like that's where all these were accumulating. Most, most of them, I would say, are around this rift valley, but there are clusters, big clusters outside. Some just seem off in the middle of nowhere. I don't know how they got to there yet. Maybe there's some others that connect the trail to those. Like I said, this, this is gonna take for forever to go through all of them, so please download Google Earth Pro. It's free right now, and 
go through this region with a fine tooth comb and just see how many of these you can find. I think the high score right now, 494. See if you can beat my high score. I've tried to focus only on complex major glyphs, things that are obviously the same builders, the same designs. There are some variations, like I said. One we'll notice is it looks more like a ring with a central mound, and that's about the bare minimum for the criteria. Anything smaller than that, just mounds. It's almost impossible. Everything looks like a mound out here. But if there is some large mounds in association with some glyphs, uh, sometimes around some outcrops, I will include those just because I'm pretty sure those are included somehow in the design. The builders put those there as well. But for the most part, I try to be true to the criteria of complex structures, like full rings with some kind of variations of mounds and rings inside and the bare minimum I'm trying to say the, the 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 bare minimum benchmark is a solid ring with a central mound inside that's the most basic obviously artificial object that we're gonna say we can find out here anything less than that it's minutia it's hyperbole I don't know what we can we can say but we'll be here for months if we're searching for just mounds. So let's begin. Let's zoom out first. We'll talk about where we are. And I'm, I apologize, I'm no CF apps Chuck. Chuck is a master wizard at Google Earth. I'm really just a newbie at this. This is really one of the first projects I've undertaken on Google Earth. I didn't even realize Google Earth Pro was free. That's why I just downloaded it. So. You can see the Nile River over here on the right, that's Egypt. And then you can see up here at the top left, that's the Straits of Gibraltar, this is the Mediterranean Sea. We're in North Africa. This is the center of the Sahara Desert. You know, that famous eye of the Sahara is right over there, Mauritania. But over here, this is called the Tassili in Azure region. This mountain range over here, the Mountains of the Bull, I believe it's called. And then down here, I believe, I have places, I believe it's called the Hagar Mountains. Hagar National Park, yes, Hagar Mountains, a Hagar. And then this more over here. See, this is Nasili in Azure National Park. So the majority of the glyphs are outside of both of those in this region up here that don't really have a name, don't have a classification that I can find. So. I'm just going to refer to this as the large rift valley. It's a vertical valley of some kind. And at the top, they call they call this area the heart of the desert. I don't know if they're referring to this specifically, but I am going to. I'm going to refer to this as the heart of the Sahara Desert. That's just an amazing plateau or peninsula, whatever you want to call that, in the middle of this giant rift valley and then this very interesting outcrop that we're going to talk about later on and there's a couple other big outcrops like that we'll talk about but first we're going to go over to the most eastern point that I could find sorry I'll try to keep my scrolling and clicking to a minimum I don't want to make you all sick so this first glyph it's the same one almost identical to the one on the far west side. This is pretty much the standard glyph throughout this whole trail. It's a large perimeter ring, and then maybe a smaller inner ring, a mound, and then other little bits sticking off of it, and easterly facing avenues. And while we're here, I'll go ahead and show you that We are talking a very long distance. It goes clear across this plateau, across that rift valley, across another plateau, and we are talking almost the same glyph. This one's a little more simple, but right up the hill a little bit, we have a more complex one, and this one is the farthest one I found. So we'll say about 
700 kilometers and that is 434.33 miles that is a long distance and that of course is a straight line like I said in my forward you can tell by the glyphs their route it was not a straight line they seem to have taken offshoot trails up and down but they worked their way across this desert I believe using these glyphs and you can see just how far they go to here and like I said in my forward again when we go a little bit farther the quality of the photos gets worse and I can't really find much detail over in this region we'll have to wait for the satellite to give us better resolution and this is a huge desert but I think we know at least to some degree where they're going where we could look either up this rim the other way or down and perhaps across and me and Philip at Ancient Alternative View were joking maybe the trail goes all the way over to Egypt or down into Nubian Ethiopia who knows and before I forget I'd like to remind everybody to make sure you're watching in the highest resolution on YouTube I try to upload at 1080p so you all can see all the details otherwise you're probably just looking at specs If you're watching on your phone they probably look like specs so make sure you can watch on a big screen in the highest resolution possible now we are going to jump from that little cluster down there up to this cluster up here and we have one in between and it is the classic shape two rings a central mound and an easterly facing avenue and when you find one you really need to look around the surrounding area to make sure there aren't others there are usually clusters sometimes they will be real close to each other on the next ridge and I, I really think that tells me they are directional markers you'll see two three four five six in a row and you can really start to see the path that they're taking through the desert here's a good example of where the quality breaks down in the photo an older photo they haven't updated this area yet so once they do I'm certain we're gonna find more of these I'm guaranteed I've missed a lot when I watched Vlad's videos again I was really surprised that even in the small number he found many of those were ones that I didn't catch some of them were very big even after looking at his video and looking in other regions I found one of the biggest ones I had missed it the first time around in a really obvious location so gotta have a keen eye so we'll jump up to this cluster first there's this one outlier up here this little cluster but they are the same glyph now some of these like I said the quality isn't so good maybe they're a little more destroyed eroded so I think something like this is a pretty good candidate and then other things like this a more simple ring and mound I still think that's connected but then you can get into other little mounds and who knows with bushes things like that but I think it's pretty obvious to see the artificial constructions and up here these were the only ones I could find they're more simple in shape and design maybe that is a terminus marker I'm not sure but I couldn't really find any more north easterly beyond that so now we'll get into this cluster now these lower ones are simple rings with mounds in the middle up to here and then we get up higher to this cluster and they get a little bit more complicated and look a little bit more like the tr traditional shape some more eroded ones and I want to say when you see a mound with a light patch in the center I think that has to imply a looted tomb if these are tombs or just someone digging into the middle of these mounds to see if there's anything in them we hear a lot about stuff like that in the Americas so I wouldn't think over here would be any different there are a few more simple rings and maybe a little bit more complicated rings you can see some of them are pretty washed out but it's obvious these are artificial maybe some other partial ones 
I tried to be faithful to my criteria again. A full ring, at least. Some of these other things could just be strings of bushes and outcrops of rock. So I think this is going to keep us on the right track. We work our way up that valley and we see there are simple directional glyphs and there's one on either side. This one's a little bit more simple, but I think this is marking direction. You go between these are gateway markers to tell you which path to take. Okay, over here what we have appears to be the terminus of this region. A different type of glyph, a simple ring, a couple simple rings, a partial ring and mound. Maybe this is the complete glyph. Maybe it's washed out. I don't know, but I couldn't find any more for a while after this or around this. So I'm thinking maybe that means there's not going to be many around for a while, like a terminus marker, because then we have to jump from that cluster up this canyon region. And over here, we find a very clear directional marker. And then to the left, a couple ridges over, see another clear directional marker. I believe it's like a gate telling travelers between them is the way to go. And up here, the glyphs do something interesting. They fork, and you'll see this one clear one tucked away in this little ridge, protected, very well constructed. And then it forks to the left, and we see there is another glyph here, maybe partially destroyed or covered with sand, or maybe this is the complete construction. But just below that, I want to point something out that I found that I think is kind of controversial. What is this? Is this modern or ancient? It's very interesting shape. It reminds me a lot of some things I see in Egypt. It's facing southeast. I don't know if that's modern or ancient. I really don't know. There's not many tracks going to it, but there are tracks going around it. Very interesting shape. Just thought that was cool. And then what's even cooler, if you go down a little further, you'll get into some habitation and agriculture, and then you'll see something pop up. What is this? This looks like a modern recreation of one of the ancient glyphs. What else could this be? I mean, I'm sure they're using it for something, but the shape, very, very, very interesting that it's, it's almost identical. They know that these glyphs are out there. Ha they have to. If they make something like this, they know these glyphs are out there. And you want to say it's part of this airport, it's, this is probably the most remote airport in the world. But really, what what purpose would this roundabout have with these covered areas? Is it just a hangar for planes? It's a very strange shape for a for a road for a plane hangar to taxi airplanes out. It's just it's very very curious. I don't know. I'm not sure about that. Then over to the right and up, those glyphs continue. They fork to the right see clear markers they have variations some simple mounds others combinations of rings and mounds avenues and they're protected in these little ridges and the drifts and these little clusters here you can see different variations easterly facing avenues here's an interesting variation doesn't have a complete ring and maybe there is an easterly avenue but it's very short and then I think it has a tiny little satellite structure next to it. Very interesting. So moving on up, obvious directional glyphs. There's a road. This is one of the only roads that go through. There's the N1, N2, and N3 that go through the Sahara here. It's funny how the road follows the glyphs in some places. The best route in the ancient past was the best route today. So you move on up, there's a little bit of a gap again, but then you start seeing clear glyphs again. And now we start getting into the oddities. Now these are the things I mentioned in my foreword. They are boomerang shaped and sometimes have mounds in the middle. I'm not sure what to call these, 
They don't appear nearly as often as the other glyphs. They don't appear to be partial rings or complex glyphs. These seem to be the completed design. Some of the other ones are very dark and very sharp edges. Very interesting things. Some of them are very, very big as well. So we'll try to catch those as we go. Here's an interesting and complex design. And then again, we're going to jump across this little gorge here, this ravine. And we're going to see there's clusters. They're pretty much the same standard layout. And then there's a giant gap. And I want to point out that there's a bunch more that continue up here. And I have not been able to find the connection between these lower glyphs and these upper glyphs. So this is definitely a point of focus for anyone that wants to help me out. Look up in this region and try to help me find a connection, a path up to these upper glyphs here. I think it must be from one of these sources, either this ravine here or maybe one of these over here. And you can see the glyphs again are like a gateway. You can see they're clear, artificial structures. And then we're going to jump up again. And I just noticed now I've already missed some these dark circles. I believe these are glyphs. These are rings. These are just heavily eroded. But I think these tell you the way up here. And then there's more clearer ones here, definite artificial structures. This one, two mounds in it. And from that little cluster, we're going to go up the ravine here to another one of these oddities. Now, this is a, one of the bigger ones. I want, to, I want to propose that this might be some kind of device, a tool for measurement, for astral alignment, or solar alignment, lunar alignment. They're doing something here, maybe measuring shadows, things like that. This is some kind of directional tool. And then from that region, we're going to jump down this peninsula here. Most of these are pretty basic and simple. There is one of note that's fairly large, a big ring here. thought that one was interesting. And then it kind of dead ends down here with some more basic ones. And then we're going to go to this cluster down here at the bottom of this peninsula. Now most of them are the standard shape, some variations a partial crescent and ring seems directional to me some other simple ones and then there's going to be a row up here of this kind the same standard variation a few interesting ones down at the bottom those are mostly the same again standard down here you're going to see a couple variations this crescent again this looks finished and deliberate up here again another crescent finished seems like here's a complete glyph of the standard version we'll call it this one over here also seems finished but a different variation so we'll have to have, come up with names for these i guess but many many glyphs have this same shape these seem like additional satellite glyphs. You almost always find these around these main standard glyphs. And from there, we have two paths to take. We could either go down and to the left or up and to the right. Now, those go pretty far up. I found one lone one up here all by itself. I couldn't find a trail to that one. If anyone else can find a trail for that, that would be interesting. Or maybe even more beyond that. But there's a definite cluster up here. And it seems to be the start of an S-bending trail that actually loops around into a ring. Find that interesting. A few more in these outlying outcrops. And then it seems to jump again over to this large rift valley where we're going to see a lot of the oddities. Uh, yes, actually up here at the top, they're really basic. They're mostly just rings with mounds, and it seems to taper off, and I really couldn't find any more after that. But it is actually a small cluster up here, and then none for a very long time. 
before we get back to this upper cluster here. So the easternmost point of that upper cluster, we see some interesting things. Here's the start all by itself. This one Vlad noticed, one of his first ones, I believe. And then over here, some more interesting ones. I found this one very interesting. It's a variation, the mound in the middle, and then another mound, and the ring is around that mound. Interesting variation, not many like this one, and then the standard one next to it. Then we have these little groupings of mostly standard ones over here, pretty much like we've seen already. And then we're going to jump over to this big cluster, and it's like a course or a ring or a trail that loops around. I don't know what's going on up here, what they're doing up here, but it seems like they double back at least once. And kind of at the beginning of this course or this route is a huge one. Look at this one. This one's also kind of like a mound. It's built up around it. We'll go ahead and get the ruler out for this one. This one's one of the bigger ones. This one, I believe, Vlad found too. From one side to the other. Let's go back to... We'll do feet. From one side to the other. About 243 feet, 242 feet. And what is that in meters? 73.64 meters. That's pretty big, but that is about half the size of one of the biggest ones I've seen. So getting into this loop, most of them are pretty much the same standard with some slight variations. There are a few crescent and mound ring examples, but for the most part, we're looking at the same glyph. You can see they kind of chose certain river valleys and tributary offshoots, and they're always trying to find lighter soil to put them in, but they are also in some of the darker areas too. So you really have to look all over. They could be anywhere in these arid regions. They're not necessarily down all down in this river valley. You can see there is water, like Vlad says in his video. You can see some of these rivers are active. They have water in them. So there is water in the desert, but it's only at very you know, specific times of the year for very short time periods. So if you're going to get deep into these remote areas, you're going to have to do it at a certain time of year when there's available water. Otherwise, you are going to dehydrate out here. You can see some areas are clear paths, and then it gets to a junction, and you'll see glyphs just above and just below, just marking where to go, where you are in the canyon system. It goes down and doubles back, and then a few below that are the same. And then it does a curious thing. It goes up and it makes this loop around. I didn't find any that connect over to here, so maybe it doesn't do a complete loop, but down here it does. It has this complete loop around of basically these same glyphs, like I said, this directional standard seems to be the most prevalent here. A few interesting complicated versions with extra mounds and different crescents and lines these must mean different things, point to different directions. This is up near the top of that loop. There's a bluff over here, and you'll see a few very clear glyphs. And that pretty much completes this area here, this very interesting loop around. And then we're going to head over to another peninsula, and then up onto the plateau there. The bottom of that peninsula, you see one that's been washed out, obviously washed out with a smaller intact one next to it. And then it forms a chain going up the left side of that peninsula into this valley up here. Here's a decent sized one at 177 feet or 54 meters. And then beyond that large one is a couple more, it's the standard and then a partially washed out standard one up here. And then we're going to jump up again. There's a gap into this cluster up on the plateau. So mostly standard uniform ones in this cluster. One interesting one variation I want to point out. It has the ring and then a smaller satellite nub on the left-hand side. Very interesting. What could that mean? And then from that cluster, 
It jumps over to a couple other clusters, four pretty standard ones down here, four or five more pretty standard ones, clear ones up here in this. It snakes around and it kind of goes up to some of these valleys and ravines. These might be the routes that they take and that's why there's no other ones. It's pretty obvious where you're gonna go. There's only a few paths and then it spills out up here Another very good glyph. And look at this right on the edge of the quality. Lucky to get this one. Ah, uh, look at this. I missed one. I think we can classify that as a geoglyph. So I simply put Vlad's geoglyph. And we're at 495. So. We have lots more to find out here. I'm not going to say I've found all of them. Like I said, look at this giant region here. None of this is really good quality, and it really matters. You have to get down to the very last couple of zooms before you can really see some of these. Here's one with another satellite mound. Perhaps it's been looted because it's white in the middle. That's just a guess. Another clear directional avenue marker here and at the top of that canyon is a simple directional marker and down here these are pretty interesting they're actually in the darker stone up on top of these bluffs and we see they're really close to modern habitation that's really remote habitation and here's another simple ring and mound wonder if these structures are here because of the glyphs why else would they have something like that there? Interesting. So, for the most part, that's the end of the plateau region. At least the Tassili in Azure plateau region. And then, you'll notice it's really obvious this rippled reddish, orange, yellow sand with this big pinnacle of rock right in the middle is a big one so it's funny there isn't any more sometimes I I'm surprised I don't see more around some of these mounds maybe they they're washed out or buried but some mounds are completely covered so next we're gonna jump over into this like right into the heart of desolation here and then after that I think we're gonna go up and around the rim and down and back around to where we started over in this one peninsula that leads back out and down the ridge. Here we go. And here again, I think I have missed one. I'm not sure. I'll, I'll let you guys decide on some of these, whether you think that is artificial or natural, if that is the same types of things as the glyphs. This is interesting. Again, it's a variation, just a big ring with a couple of mounds and then another simple directional over here and that is it and this is right in the middle sorry one more another simple directional that is it right here in the middle of nothing these two pinnacles of rock and that's two on either side that really makes me think gateway you go through there that's how you navigate this desolation there's nothing there's no other markers no other directional headings you you just have to go by what the glyphs tell you to do otherwise you will die out there okay now we're gonna jump over to the the ring that goes around this rift valley which is where all the interesting stuff is I think so we'll start off with some simple rings again I think that might be like a terminus like this is the end of the area. We don't see many in between here or there. If you guys could find some again, it's very dark rock. It's going to be hard to find, but you might be able to find more in there. Out of the lower cluster, this one's the most interesting, I think. It has that little satellite mound. A string of simple ones. And then we jump up to a couple over here. Hard to decide 
what the configuration was. It looks like two or maybe even three rings, directional. And then a simple ring, maybe two rings and a mound. Another interesting variation with the extra mound out here on the perimeter ring. And that's the lower group, most easterly group there. And then it'll branch off and go up this canyon. But first, let's look out here into the middle of nothing again. A couple very interesting glyphs. Directional, more southeasterly. While we're here, I just want to point out this thing. This is in the poor quality photo. So we're looking at something huge here if that is artificial because you can see the glyph over there, tiny, tiny little thing. This ring is huge. That's got to be some kind of natural, I don't know. We'll leave that open. We'll wait until the picture gets better, right? So then up from that one, we have a few other little clusters here. This is probably like a southerly way to go across the Rift Valley. It's a nice big one. And here's an oddity. This is... This, will, what would you consider this? This is definitely artificial now. We're going to see lots more of these, but a lot smaller. This is probably one of the biggest ones. If you want to, we'll go ahead and get the ruler out again. And 135 meters. 443 feet. That's pretty interesting. It looks like there's a little nub, registration nub in the middle or sighting nub, orientation nub. This does look like some kind of astronomical tool or solar calendar. What do you guys think? And above it, just some washed out glyphs, directional and maybe one a little bit more complicated. Perhaps the remnants of another one, hard to say. But why did they come all the way out here to make that glyph? It's probably because this glyph would get you out of here, it would tell you the direction, I have to assume. And then there's another little cluster over here. These are just kind of on the ridge. We're, we're going to see lots of these. Pretty faded, washed out. And then the cluster below. This might only be one. I thought I saw a couple, but yeah, this one, the light is obscuring it. And there might be others. I get kind of iffy about some of them, but that more than likely is one. And there could be more up here. Just the lighting is not good. And then let's go ahead and jump up to one of the more interesting areas. This giant outcrop of rock. It's like S-shaped. And the glyphs go all the way around it. Now this is one of the first places I went to look. Because this is one of the first places Vlad showed. And he showed a lot of the variations. And I knew this one had to be more important than some of the other ones because there's more variation here than other places. So let's go ahead and do a loop around. Right away we see one pretty complicated even though it's washed out. Several mounds and rings and nubs, satellite mounds and hills, a simple directional. And I believe he shows one up here that, yeah, I believe it's this one. It almost looks like a three-leaf clover or a double mound with two avenues. This one's strange and it might even have a directional marker next to it. Hard to tell on some of this stuff, but that one is very unique. And he shows that in his thumbnail, I believe. And then other things, I was just starting here, I was like, well, that's gotta be connected. And then these have to be connected. So you can get into the minutia of mounds. And there could be over thousands if you start talking about mounds. But I, like I said, tried to be faithful to more strict criteria. These are really interesting. Very well done. And then of course the little satellite mound. And I wanted to say like maybe this is an alignment. Maybe these have something to do with each other. They are connected in the overall design. Other little mounds. Some of them more complicated than others. And then this one obviously washed out by the flooding. And we'll go around. Some of them more complicated than others. 
simple directional one tucked in there a little more complicated another simple directional double mound oops sorry add a larger one and then a smaller one we jump to the most northerly one very complicated multiple mounds crescents avenues partial ring hard to tell with that one and then a couple little specks out here some of them we I can, I'm gonna have to say at least one of these are we could maybe call that three up to you guys simple ones they get a little fancy over here a couple different mounds more of an oval shape on that one and then a few more directionals still all facing east even though it goes around the mountain they're all facing roughly east there's a gap around there maybe you guys can find some some simple rings and mounds looks looted because it's light in the middle same with this one and then a few more down here at the bottom simple there could be other mounds connected like this one and then back a simple ring and then we're back to the start again so a lot of variation there we didn't see all that much variation in the other ones at least not that close to each other so that could mean that these are all talking about different directions or different paths who knows so we'll take off from there and we're going to head up this ridge and up to this heart of the rift valley so right away we're back to directionals but this one's kind of unique it has this kind of curved opening to the avenue that's very unique design and again we're around the edge of clarity so over here could there could be more but there's at least a couple look that's a very big one so now we've jumped up that ridge a little bit more most of those were like this one very simple even though this one's very well preserved and you can see we're in a different I mean, this might just be the photo but I think we're in a different color material here darker here's another oddity perhaps looks like one of these boomerang things if you think that's natural you might be right but we're gonna see a lot more like this they all face east again so I'll let you guys decide you can see there's a trail, other rings and mounds that go up the ridges. It follows the ridges. See how this is almost perfect line up the ridge. One with an extra mound at the bottom. Large one there. Small one there. And then it kind of goes off back into here. Now, settlement. I believe this is modern settlement. You see some like white structures. Some other people pointed out, I think, to Vlad that there could be ancient structures. I don't know. I can't really tell that kind of stuff when you get into just walls and right angles. So we'll leave that to the experts. But I think I've been pretty good at spotting our glyphs they all appear to be the same still not much you know drastic variation like another territories versions of the glyphs or anything this is all the same glyphs for the most part there's a nice one and some of the other satellite mounds might be part of that here's one of those oddities again See, it's like a boomerang shape. I don't know how else you describe that. Very weird. Same direction again. And then another one right up the hill, see? A mound. And these two offshoots. And another glyph. Even in, this, this quality isn't so great, but even in the kind of rubbish quality you can still make out rings 
definitely artificial things. Yes, and then look at this big one here, kind of washed out. And then we go from that washed out one up a little higher, and what is this? This is a huge oddity. It's got two mounds and two really long offshoots. This one's been washed away probably by the stream. So this definitely looks like that thing from earlier on the bluff, some kind of directional marker. This one's a little bit more slender and there's an extra mound, but this is definitely artificial. This must be a tool of theirs. A couple more just up the hill from that and it looks like I missed one. That's obviously a mound. So we'll go ahead and add that one. 496. See, we'll probably get over 500 just me showing you these. It's really impressive, guys. There could be more out here. I don't know what that, you know. Some of them so washed out, I just passed them over. But that seems to be it for a while there. This big gap. And then they go up higher. Or maybe they jump across here. I couldn't find any in between. Maybe they went all the way up first and around and down. But it could, they could have also just jumped across, it seems like. Who knows? I would also like to point out this airstrip here. Again, one of the most remote airstrips you've ever seen. And then habitation, too. Right by the oddity. That's interesting. Who knows? Who knows what's going on over here? And beyond that washout, there's you know just a couple directionals. We get to another oddity, a small one. Same kind of thing, though. A boomerang shape with a mound in the middle. Other mounds and rings next to it. Who knows, maybe some other things in here. Quality's kind of bad. Maybe that's one of these oddities. Maybe that's a washed out glyph. I really think that is. That looks like a full ring. Again, another geoglyph. And then maybe this is one of those directional markers. It's washed out. See geoglyphs here? Quality's really poor, but you can still see them. This other group here. See, they tried to get them out into the lighter soil so you could see them better and they could go further but I couldn't really find any washed out and then they jump over the ridge into this canyon back here some pretty big ones well preserved ones so from the washed out region that cluster we jumped over and we're going up we can Split here, it forks. We can take this ridge. This is two settlements. Obviously, I think they're modern. And then other things up here, and then over here. So we'll go we'll look at these first. Some pretty big ones here. Well preserved ones. I believe they're all directional ones, or the standard ones, like we're calling them. And then there is a gap again. And then at the mouth of this canyon or the outlet of this canyon, rings again. Directional. And farther up, it may not end up here, but the quality stops. And even on the bare edge here, I found another one. There could be one beyond it. So then we'll go back up that ridge. You can see this just like a, a guard shack or something, or a uh, outpost of some kind. Did I miss another one? I might have. I want to say that's one, guys. We'll go ahead and put marker there, because you can see the inner ring and the avenue easterly again. I think I'm going to go ahead and say... That's another one. 497. Another one of those little outposts or what have you goes up. And then we get into more of these oddities again. Another boomerang shape with mounds. Complex design here. Another boomerang. Perhaps other ones here. 
They're just really small. And then more. This one's pretty big. See it here? And then another one here. With the mound in the middle. Um, let's see. Yeah, a simple one. And then a little bit more complicated. Crescent. There's a gap. A couple more. Two of the standard ones. Another oddity. Yeah, clear. See, these are repeating. This is artificial. They made these, whatever they're for. Another one. This one, deeper. Different shape than the other. Two mounds. And then it goes out where we were here. So we're coming up. Spills out a little bit. I couldn't find any further. Cluster. Lots of different variations there. Standard ones. Another settlement, perhaps. Outpost. Here's another one that's kind of washed out. You can see the ring and the mound. The bigger ring. Perhaps other mounds. The quality breaks down around here. Yes, I want to say that is one, right, guys? That's a ring and a mound. It gets fuzzy, but I still look for Like, what that might be artificial, guys. I left that out just because it's so eroded, but that might be another one of these crescents, oddities. Look at the geoglyph over here. It's very, very thin. You know, you can almost miss it. Very long avenue. It's interesting. And then there's only a couple more up here. The standards. Variations of the standards. Right. So we're getting to the top of this rift valley. And you see this is where we were. The last two, they're pretty much standard the same. Two standard ones pretty much over this ridge here all up through here and then you get some very strange things up here again they get a little bit more complicated and you see the oddity again that crescent shape with the mound in the middle and the geoglyph is pretty complicated three mounds two rings and there could be other things out here that i missed i think this is one right you're gonna say that's artificial I think so. Let's go ahead and pin it. Like I said, we could be here all day if I go through every single one of these. So we'll just pick the best ones. And we'll say, you know, wow, another one? All right, I'll pause for a second. All right, so like I said, these things are everywhere. They're very easy to miss and to skip over. Very interesting cluster there, though, around the bottom of that ridge. What's going on up here with oddities? Each oddity is a little different. That one's kind of faded, washed out. And I found another one in this valley tucked away over here. So we are officially at 500. This top little area here, most of them are just directional like we've seen before the standard and then there's a couple over here that are variations simple rings and long straight avenues i believe there's a couple of those here's a better one very simple and then it goes on either side with the standard and then it clearly comes back around and down I didn't see any in here, but maybe you guys can spot some. I did find one over here on the very tip, and then they continue back down here along this ridge. Most of them are pretty much what we've seen before, different degrees, clarity, 
and preservation, but mostly all these directional ones peppered throughout. And then as we get down to the edge of the peninsula down here, things start to get really interesting. And it starts here with a couple of these oddities. Here's another clear one. This one's a little more southeasterly and the right hand side is washed away. Clearly next to a glyph though. These are pretty faint on this side, but you can still see they're there. All these on this side are like that. Clarity, breakdown, there could be more, right? You see a big gap right here. Look at this whole patch. There could be tons in here that we're not seeing. And then we continue down here. Simple rings, mounds. We get through this wash. And then down here is the biggest cluster of the oddities. You'll see this boomerang shape. And then you'll see another boomerang shape. And then you'll see another boomerang shape. This one with no mound, with really crisp edges. Maybe washed out ones, it's hard to tell. Another boomerang shape. Very crisp down here with a little mound. It's in the lighter part. Down here, another one with a glyph right next to it. This is a pretty complicated glyph. Looks like three or four mounds or an avenue between mounds. It's very interesting. And then simple little bumps and things that I didn't include, but definite standard ones around there. And not many more beyond, but I did spot. One of my favorites here, look at this one. This one is very clear, very crisp. It points to the east. It has the mounds. What is this? Is this just a pile of rocks? How big is this? How tall is this? And how did, how did you use it? Very interesting. And then you can see somehow they got inside this inner valley. I'm not sure of the exact entry point, but some of these twisty canyons are probably a good, I, good starting point. Now, these are pretty faded, but you can still see them. They're pretty standard. Nothing too fancy. It gets down toward the middle. You see more clusters. This one's interesting. Another elongated one with a long avenue. Several mounds close together, two or three, simple one. And this is interesting, this island within an island within giant desert we have. This is the middle of the middle of the middle. We have geoglyphs, the exact same. And it looks like this is how they walked up through. Maybe this is a gateway, or up this way, from over here, to get in. Right behind it, we have a clear oddity. This one, more southeasterly facing, with a mound on top, I think. Maybe it was looted. And another one down here, more easterly. I don't see a mound. And then a simple ring, and that's really it for the inside. I thought there would be more in here, but there's just a few. So this is probably the farthest reaches, the hardest place to get to. I'm just throwing out ideas, but it's very remote here. Somehow they got inside to the very middle. We'll jump over. We already saw the bottom over there. There's a gap to another oddity. This one is pretty big and pretty clear. Look at that with the mound in the middle. Should we measure this one? I think we should. Now, 160 feet and 49 meters. Smaller, but decent size. And then just above that, we have another oddity. It is smaller, but the same thing, obviously, with a fairly complicated glyph next to it. And that might even be a washed out one there. It's hard to tell, right? Obvious glyph there, though. 
We're going down the other side now. We're going to look at these two oddities. Very clear design, shape, direction. Same with this one. Then just a couple simple standard ones. And then one way down here. Right there. A nice clear one. But that is it for this side. Yes, that's where we just were. There really isn't any along this whole ridge over here. But we do get down into some more over here, these little pockets. Kind of like before, just a couple on the ridges. I think like gateway markers to show you the way to cut through and to get across what would otherwise be an inhospitable des desert. So yeah, that's... That's the limit of what I want to call an artificial structure there. And we're getting over to these last couple groups over here. This is the farthest. I, again, it could go further, but some of the quality breaks down over in this direction. So you guys can help me there. But in this darker area, we see first a simple one. And then that more complex one. I believe these mounds... Are part of the whole design and I'm trying to go through and look at these first and find the most interesting ones I mean these are pretty much the standard again this comes down to some more of the oddities I think we should look at all of these just because they're so fascinating to me this one is pretty crude I'm gonna say that's artificial though then we go a little bit further down the same ridge and we're going to see a few more. And just the fact that we see more on the same ridge, see, that makes me think it belongs to them. It's the same culture making them for whatever reason. And then there's a whole string of them. Yeah, this is a very interesting region. We have a fat one, a very thin one, some of these I don't know if I even put a place mark on because I didn't know what I was looking at. This one here. This one here. This is the one I thought definitely. But then there's other things that could be oddities. Another one here. These look ancient. These look contemporary with the stone rings. And they're nearby. See, another glyph right here like they're part of the plan, part of the design. Those things are very strange. I mean, they seem they seem like a solar alignment, but they're just kind of a, a creepy looking shape. I don't know. They look let, let's go ahead and just talk about the elephant in the room. They really do look like flying saucers from the side profile. I don't know. You, that can't just be me. Anyway, let's move on. Like I say, anti diluvian or otherworldly, doesn't matter to me where they came from, just want to find out who they were and how they could do what they did. So these things are obviously artificial. They all faced east just like the glyphs do. It seems like these were put in specific places, more specific than others. That's an interesting shape. It's crooked. It's not symmetrical. And then perhaps a couple, but definitely this one. Even this one, as crooked as it is, still kind of faces east. So I have yet to find any that face west. Very interesting. And then we get into another cluster over here. So in that cluster, we have a simple ring. Another directional one here, standard one. Pretty close to the roads. Now again, see some of these follow the road pretty closely almost as though the road planners were putting them in remembering a tradition something of the past makes you wonder this is interesting a very large outcrop and a few things I'm gonna say are artificial this and definitely this perhaps a few other things definitely that Perhaps other 
I see a faint ring. It, you guys can argue that with me. And actually, I've noticed that there's a lot of simple rings in this region. Almost all of these pinned down here are just simple rings, other than, of course, the oddities. Like this one. See it? This, this is also an interesting configuration. There's several circles, but no ring, or at least it's very eroded and washed away. But this is this is one of the most southerly of the points. These could also be connected, incorporated into the design. See, even there might be another piece, and who knows, right? So we're pretty much getting back to where we started from. These are the most southerly glyphs. They come across. There seems to be one right here at the exit or the entrance. Very simple ring again. Then we get back into the desert proper, where we were, and these continue across and back up and over. So two out in the middle of nowhere, directional markers I think, yes, and a ring. I don't know what the rings mean in comparison to the more complex glyphs. Do those mean stop, don't go any further? really uh, makes me wonder see like here all these are rings some more complicated one here maybe but all these are just simple rings and mounds so we we do see some clustering around certain outcrops and the fact that this one all has the same glyph around it what does that imply about this thing is this important to them like that s or spiral shaped outcrop is that one more important to them for some reason is this some kind of like India cult culture, a, uh, a Hindu or Buddhist or Jain culture that has some kind of mountain worship going on? I mean, why else would you go all the way out this way? And then again, this one is really interesting. It's got a ton of them around it. This one was very special to them. We just, Yeah, we start to see more of the standard ones. Yes, a lot more standard ones over here. Clusters. Very well preserved ones. Yeah, you can see this mountain. This one was pretty important to them. Then gets into some more rings again. All the way around. There's tons of them on this mountain. So, I don't know. Certain regions... Mining, maybe? Collecting ore? I don't know. That one faces pretty south, but still easterly. And then we're going to jump over to a couple more little islands of rock out here. But that's going to be pretty much it, you guys. I think I want to show you all the largest one. That's cool. I found that even in the bad quality, you can find them. It's got to look close. I think it was glyph number 399 that was the biggest one that I found. I might have already passed over it. Some of them. It takes that one extra scroll of the zoom to realize how big they really are. Or to find them. So make sure your graphics card is working really well. Yeah, we've come all the way around full circle. Perhaps there's more to the left and the right. Let's go to glyph number 399 real quick. Where is that one? Over here. Yes, in this Tassili in Azure region. This guy. He is pretty big. So, let's get the ruler out. Yeah, 475 feet long. That's pretty impressive. Meters. 114, 144, excuse me, meters. Almost 145 meters. And then across. We'll say about 88 meters, 89 meters. 
291 feet. So that's one of the biggest glyphs that I found out here. It's in this region with this S group or this circle roundabout group up here, whatever they were doing up here. There could be a lot more up here, guys. I've, I've just gotten tired and weary over the past three days of looking. My eyes hurt. So hopefully you guys can help me find some more. I hope you guys thought that was interesting. If you didn't, I have a short nub video coming up. You guys might think that's pretty cool. It's a site I've never seen before, but it's in a familiar region to us. So look for that one coming up. And then hopefully soon we'll get the first installment of the Nubs of India video out. We have 27 temples and counting. Who knows if we find any more in the process of looking for photos. It usually happens. So the discoveries just seem to keep coming at me and coming at everybody lately. It's a very, uh, it's a very lively time for ancient history and I really appreciate all you guys joining me on this expedition without even leaving my living room we've found over 500 glyphs I want to say out in this desert and who were they when were they what were they doing out there I'd love to know your opinion in the comments check out the links please check out Vlad's channel subscribe to him he's a great researcher he never quits